hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel my name is evidence and in today's video i am going to show you how to do one heart encoding so to begin i'll just go ahead and import the data that we are going to be using and i'm going to import pandas as pd shift enter execute this current cell you are in and create a new cell below it so i'm just gonna go ahead and read our data frame that is load our data frame and I'm going to use our URL and we can do df.head to get a preview of our data. So as you can see right here, this is a preview of our data frame. Nothing too fancy about it, it's just a preview of our data frame. So in this tutorial video we are going to be one heart encoding employment status so basically when do you use one heart encoding one heart encoding is where you want to transform a category into integers you know when you run your model the models cannot understand text like this so you need to convert text like this one into integers and quickly let's just go ahead and get a preview of our data frame that we are going to be working with so as you can see right here there are five unique categories in this category and this data frame is, has 9000 rows and the top category is employed and this occurs five about 5600 times almost 5700 times and we can um, repeat this again but time but this time let's do dot value count and with this you can see uh, the individual category names so employed unemployment equal leave disabled retired so ordinal encoding which is a different type of encoding I made a video about that go ahead and watch it is when order matters so when you want to give more weight to one category than the other category right but one heart encoding is like when you do not want to give more weight to any more category so in this situation i want all the employment status categories to have the exact same weight and one heart encoding basically creates a new column with each category and put a zero wherever that category occurs and once i do this one hot encoding is gonna make a whole lot more sense to you but before i get into the code let me just quickly show you the documentation we are going to be using for this one hot encoding so this is the category encoders website and um this is one hot encoding and it produces one feature per, per category and each is binary so one feature meaning one column for each category and it either gets a one or a zero and these are the different parameters you can use and as you can see here this is this is a different method that it has it has a fit method a transform method and a fit transform method all right the fit method is just fitting the encoder to the data frame and the transform method is performing the specified trans transformation on the data frame but instead of doing this in separate lines of code you can do it with, with a single line of code using the fit transform method so with that being said let's go ahead and start with the coding so before you can do anything make sure you install category encoders and installing category encoders is very simple if you are in google collab or if you are working in your own virtual environment this is how you install category encoders if you are working with anaconda this is how you install category encoders so let's go ahead and copy this real quick and this exclamation mark basically says to do a share command in a notebook. 
So let's go ahead and install category encoders. All right. So now that we have it installed, let's go ahead and import it. So import category encoders as CE. So now let's go ahead and instantiate our encoder. So instantiate our encoder and let's do encoder is equal to CE dot one hat encoder. And in this situation, we provide the column that we want to in encode. So let's call it calls is equal to Let's just copy the, this so we don't misspell the column name. And then we want to use category names. We want to sp specify this as true. If you don't do this, you will get weird results that you won't like. So just trust me when I say always specify this as true. If you do not specify this as true, weird things are going to happen. I promise you that. Like I might do this again and show you what happens if you do not specify this as true. But it's not very pleasant. So now that we've instantiated our encoder, let's go ahead and run this. So assuming you have a training data set and a test data set and you want to do the same transformation on your test and training data set, then you use the fit transform method on the training data set and use the transform method on the test data set. So to quickly demonstrate this, I'll go ahead and split our data frame. So I'll go ahead and import sklearn dot no from sklearn dot model selection import train test split. And let's do our X train. Here's the train test is equal to train test split. And we want to split our data frame and let's just use all the default. And I'm going to put random states here so that if you run this notebook by yourself in the future, on your local computer, you'll still get the same result as me. All right. So now that we split our data frame into train and test, Let's go ahead and do our one hot encoding. If we do train encoded, it's equal to encoder dot fit transform. So we want to fit transform our training data set. So this is the one hot encoding part. Now if we do train encoded dot head. As you can see right here, actually, let me go ahead and also do train dot head. So if you look at our original training data frame, we have employment status and we have the different categories for employment status, right? But with our one hot encoded data frame right here, each category now has its own column. So we have employment status employed, employment status unemployed. Employment status medical leave. Employment status disabled. Employment status required um, retired. So whatever there's employment status employed, it will give it a one. And whenever there is no employment status employed, it will give it a zero. So whenever it's unemployed, it will give it a one under the unemployed column and then give everything else a zero. And whenever there's medical leave, it will get a one. And whenever there's no medical leave, it will get a zero. So one of um, the good thing about one hot encoding is that every category is tr treated equally. You know, so whenever um, something does occur, it to have a one. And whenever it doesn't happen, it will get a zero. So all the categories is given equal weight. But one of the downside of one hot encoding is 
was considered the cause of dimension, dimensionality. You know, you do not want to do one heart encoding with high cardinal futures. So a high cardinality future will be something like state. In state here, I believe we have, as you mean, we have 50 different unique observations for state. You are going to end up with 50 new columns. And with 50 new columns, your dimensions is going to grow exponentially and explode. So if you have a whole lot of futures and you do one heart encoding, and all these futures are high cardinality futures, high cardinality columns, then you are going to run into the problem of extremely high dimensionality and you're going to have the problem of the course of dimensionality. So one hot encoding is good for when you have like let's say five unique observations in the future or like five unique categories in the column. But in situations where you have 50 unique items or 100 unique items or even in customer, even here in customer, you are going to have 9,000, over 9,000 unique items because each customer is a new row, right? So if you do one hot encoding on customer, you will have 9,000 new columns. So you don't want that. So one hot encoding is not good for high cardinality futures like let's say customer or state in this situation but it's good for like low cardinality columns like employment status so with that being said let's go ahead and look at our test that i said if you do test.head as you can see here we still have our employment status as a single column and the thing is, if you have a training data set and a test data set, whatever transformations you do on your training data set, you want to do the exact same tra transformation on your test data set. Okay. Since you transformed the training data set, employment status using one hot encoding, you want to also apply one hot encoding to your test data set and to do that you do test encoded you don't have to call it test encoded you can just do test equal to test in you know, equal to whatever you want to do but i just find it easier to give uh, the transformed data frame a new name and it makes it easier to keep track of things and in the future if you want to go back to the untransformed version of the data frame you already have it stored in a variable you know you don't have to worry about overriding the variables so test encoded is equal to ce dot one hot encoder and no we've already, no so basically to perform the same transformation to our test data frame we just do encoder dot transform and we want to transform our test data sets so if we do test encoded dot head as you can see right here the same thing has been done to our test data frame we now have five new columns well actually four new columns describing the single employment status column okay and pay attention to this when i run the encoder through the training data set i did fit transform which means fit the encoder through the training data set and transform it according to these specifications okay and then when i did when i run the encoder through the test data set I only did encoder.transform, which means this encoder has already been fit through our test data frame. I just want the same transformation to be done to our test data set. So make sure when 
you are running the encoder through the test data frame, you are using transform and not phase transform. So with that being said, I'm going to show you what I sh said I was going to show you earlier. That basically concludes it for this video. You can just give it a thumbs up and subscribe or you can keep watching if you like. So I am going to instantiate um, this coder again, encoder again, but this time I'm not going to do this just so that you can see what it looks like when you omit this statement. So in this situation, let's call it encoder2 and let's remove that. So let's go ahead and run it and then let's do train encoded2 is equal to encoder2 dot fit transform our training data. All right. Now, if I do train encoded to dot head, this is what we get. See, because we omitted use category name, it replaced Instead of using the category names, it's used one, it's used two, three, four, five. You know, the problem with this is that you don't know what one means or you don't know what two means, three means, four means, five means. And as time goes by or as you keep on working on, on this data frame with this data frame, you eventually get confused as um, what does employment status one means, this, what does employment status two means. You know, because you don't have um, the category names attached to it. So that's what happens if you omit use category names equal to true. So just by putting this parameter right here, you get the category names attached to the column names. But if you omit it, then you just get one, two, and three. You can visit me online at evidencen.com or evidencen.com slash blog. That's my primary website where I write tutorial data science blog posts. You can also visit me online at machinelearningeducation.com. So this is where I put all my resources. This tutorial Python notebook and any other resource that I use in my YouTube channel or in my videos is going to be found here at machinelearningeducation.com slash free. So once you're on this page, you can click on free data science resources and you'll be able to get to this page. And I'm also going to leave this link in the description below. If you go to machinelearningeducation.com slash free, you'll be able to get access to this notebook. You'll be able to get access um, to this video and other videos. And sometimes after creating the videos, I publish them inside this community first before they are even available on YouTube. So in here, I put all my notebooks, all my resources, my videos, my blog. I create so many YouTube videos and blog posts that um, it's just easier. For me to take everything and put it under one platform where you can easily get access to it. So that's machinelearningeducation.com slash free where I have all my data science resources and I'm continuously adding more stuff to it. Again, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you did not like it, but you made it this far in the video, please give it a double thumbs down. And I'll talk to you on the next video. Bye.